Alright, alright. Just make sure. Alrighty, righty, righty. <clears throat> Button off. <coughs> Hey Facebook, it's Don Victor here. We have another amazing, amazing, amazing show ready for you. This will be the most incredible show. That is my promise to you. I will guarantee it or uh, or I'll do cartwheels uh, naked. So this is going to have to be the best show ever because I ain't doing naked cartwheels for nobody. Um, at least not anymore. Let's see here. It is a Friday night on the East Coast, 7 o'clock. And, uh, and instead of out chasing honeys and making money, uh, Don Victor's here bringing, bringing you another episode of the Core 80 Call. Because that's how committed I am to seeing composers get revealed in this space. What I mean by that is artists who want to take their art to a whole nother level and tap into, uh, tap into composing artwork, not just, uh, you know, painting and, 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 and doing their craft, but actually uh, taking stories and composing them so that they trigger a, a, a emotional responses, um, sensations, and deep connections. Uh, through composition, you can, take a, you can take a story, a good idea, and make it a very profound experience. I'm going to show you a piece of art tonight that, uh, in all honesty, made me cry. Because as I spent some time with it, the, the genius that went into this piece reveals the mind and the heart of a very, very deep man. And when you can learn to read a painting, when you can learn to read a work of art, because you understand the language of composition, you understand the language of design, you have a level of intimacy with people you've never known in your life. I once was in, a, 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 in an art museum and there was this uh, piece of artwork up on the wall. And I'm going to promise you, this is going to be a little bit of a longer show. So just sit back, get some popcorn, maybe some uh, plantain chips, you know. i got some plantain chips here. And sit back and enjoy. No Netflix tonight. Tonight is Don Victor. It's you and me, baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, I was at this uh, museum... And there was a little crowd of people, and they were doing a tour. And there was a painting on the wall. And the guy who was talking about the painting went into about the politics of the time and the religion of the time, and, and that the furniture inside this painting was significant because of this and that, and all this bullshit, okay? Because he, he didn't know what, the, what, what an artist thinks. He doesn't know the process of pulling your hand into the invisible and pulling it out, ripping that thing out into, into visibility. He doesn't know that. All he knows is shit he read in a book somewhere. So he goes on and he starts talking about this painting. So I take him to the side afterwards and I say, you know, dude, um, I have to say... Uh, this painting, uh, when I look at it and I read the design, it has nothing to do with what you said. He said, what, what do you mean? I said, well, look at this. There's a candle against a black background, and it creates a, a nice vertical, but the candle, uh, the flame goes out, and it's like a smoke. And so your eye comes down this vertical. It goes down this violin. Uh, at the end of the violin, there's a string that's popped off, making the, the violin useless, right? And then the arabesque comes down and it brings you through the, the sheet music and there's, there's uh, someone was composing music, but the music was never finished. And so all of this was collected in a box. And I said, you know, when I read this painting, the only message I get is that somebody died. 
Something died. The flame went out. The music ended. The composition was never finished. And he said, huh, that's interesting. Because the year that that painting was painted was the year that the, that artist's father passed away. That's what the freaking painting was about. His father was a musician. It had nothing to freaking do with the religion or the politics or the furniture design of the time. He just wanted to slap at that man. He totally missed it. This was a, a, a biography. This was a portrait of this man's father. Not some freaking piece of furniture. So I get really sensitive about this because I love the history of fathering. This is one of the core things about the academy. We are serious about composition and we're serious about fathering. Now, by fathering, I, I, I don't necessarily mean, you know, having kids. But what I mean is uh, coaching, mentoring, taking somebody, uh, you could call it kinging, okay? Uh, taking somebody, investing your energy and your time, taking care of that person until they come to a, a new place of maturity. And then you set them free so that they go stand on their own. But you've groomed them. You've, you've cared for them. That's what we do here at the academy. This is what we're all about. And I love reading stories. You're going to, you know, if you read stories about how fathers taking their sons, I mean, one of my favorite, outside of Picasso, Picasso's a brilliant one. His dad groomed him to the point then gave him the, the myth, mythology around it is that when Picasso came to a certain age, his dad stopped painting. He said, I have nothing else to teach you. And he gave him his, uh, I think it was palette and his brush. Uh, one of my favorite stories is, uh, and it's one of my favorite artists, is uh, Bellini. And when he was a little guy, uh, his dad was teaching him how to sculpt and, and design. And uh, an archbishop, I, I think it was an archbishop, somebody of the family that was part of the Vatican, you know, came along and, and said to the dad something like, yeah, hey, if you keep keep training him like this, he's going to be better than you, right? He's going to put you out of business. And, and, and that's, that's like that's the whole freaking point, that you would take what was inside you, you would download it into your, your children or your apprentices so that they can go and become masters or be adults and fathers of others, right? So that's the whole point. It's about passing that richness. This is why it's called the artist heritage, because we need to pass it on. Our artist heritage is at least a minimum of 5,000 years. I think it goes back probably 6, 7, 8, maybe 10. There is no way that those uh, uh, Babylonians and the people during the uh, Meso Mesopotamia time and the Sumerians were designing at that level of, 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 of excellence and they just discovered it 10 years earlier. Bullshit. There are people who are trying and trying and trying for a lifetime. That, what you see back in those times, 5,000 years ago, that came from history. I mean, like, from, from, from probably centuries of work and discovery. It didn't start with then. We just haven't found the, the cultures that it actually did come from. So, we have a very long history a very long lineage. Bellini went in front of the Pope. I say Bellini, I think it's Bernini. Bernini went in front of the Pope. And uh, the Pope said, when he was probably about maybe 12, 13 years old, and, he, and the Pope said, draw me a picture of what you think St. Peter looks like. And so he drew a portrait of what he thought St. Peter would have looked like. And the Pope said, dang, man, you're so good. And then he proceeded to say, you are the artist of Rome. And at an early age, he then was given access to the, to the libraries at the Vatican, the training, the access to the art. He was even given a biographer because they understood legacy. They weren't doing ni nice art classes so that you could go in and hang something on your refrigerator. 
You weren't hanging things on walls so, you, so your friends and your family could pat you on the head and say, good little artist, good little artist. This is serious business. And the only reason he was able to stand in front of the Pope and get that place was because of the work his father did with him. I love hearing stories of dynasties of art. I'm building one right now. My children know all of this. There are people here that my grandchildren will play with your grandchildren. And they will know each other because we met each other online. Think about that. We're not having little play, 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 you know, play time, play dates on, on the internet here. We're building, we're building kingdoms and empires. If you can get that in your head and understand what we're doing here, you'll be part of that. We're farming. We're kingdom building. This is serious stuff. This is generational thinking. If you can get that, because that's how composers think. We just don't sit down and, oh, it's done. We don't masturbate on a freaking canvas. We take our time and make love to it because we understand we're birthing generations. If you can understand what I'm saying and you can get it, you understand the level of seriousness that we approach our craft. So I want to show you a painting by Alexei Steele, one, and I'm going to quickly go through his work real quick, and then I'm going to spend the rest of the time on his father. So let's get into the artwork. So here's a painting that Alexi did. It's an amazing uh, painting of a jockey on a horse. Hence, a jockey. Okay. But when you look at this, the, the, the composition here, there are a couple little things that are going on that are just absolutely freaking brilliant. Okay? See, a master composer isn't trying to capture a moment in time, he's actually cultivating an animation. He's actually creating an animation. He's composing an animation. There are... When you can read a painting, you realize every thing you see is a decision. And a decision that was made in a specific time for a specific purpose to create a, a specific uh, um, reaction in you. So in this image, first of all, let's just look at the fence in the background and the high contrast of the, of the ground to the, to the, to the grassy, grassy area and where the fence is. That is on a, a, a tapered diagonal. It's allowing our eye to move quickly through this piece. Why would it move? Why should we move it quickly? Because it's a freaking horse running. It's a gallop. I love the fact that with the fence, it gives you a rhythm, a pace. In those verticals, it gives you this visual rhythm. So now let's look at the legs of the horse. Notice that the first leg in the front, the far leg, it comes in alignment with the with the jockey's butt, right? So when you when if you squint your eyes, it creates a thrust. It's not a leg in the jockey. It's a it's a thrust. A thrust moves your eyeball. It moves it from the from the jockey's back, that top left hand part of the painting, bam, comes down. And what happens is it that leg hits the ground. And what's beautiful is because when that hits the ground and then you have the fence in the ground uh, in the ground moving your eye forward in that tapered uh, diagonal, now your eye wants to catch another piece of information. And if you look at the back of the mountain and how that comes down in alignment with the, the horse's front leg, now it gives you the second, the second uh, uh, step of the horse. 
So it's ba ba, ba ram ba ram ba ram. You feel the you feel the horse moving. You hear the horse moving. There's sound in this piece. And then the last little thing, which I just thought was absolutely brilliant. Again, I don't know if Alexi did this uh, intentionally, meaning like, you know, if I was going to do this, I would sit there and do it intentionally. I would think about all these things ahead of time, and I would I would strive to make that happen. But if you are uh, sensitive to composition, and he is because of his tradition, his Russian tradition, his father was very, very, uh, uh, he, he told me earlier today that um, his father... <coughs> was very serious about composition. And so he was around it, okay? He came up out of it. Uh, and so you, you pick up these things. So what I love about this, my favorite part about this painting is the high point of contrast. If you squint your eyes, the highest point of contrast is the jockey's head. And if you look at that dark head against that light blue background, which is the sky, uh, and then you look at the mountain, the mountain creates... Uh, this beautiful wave feel, and then also it comes up through the horse too, and it just you you your eye go, it comes in and up and in up, and you feel the gallop of the horse. See, once you begin to see this, you can't look at this painting ever. The, uh, you can never look at a, uh, this painting the same way ever again. It will always make a sound. It will always move. Now, a lot of people might walk through this and see this painting and say, Hey, Lexi, great painting, man. Great, great painting. Oh, I love the way you use that paint. And then they move on to the next painting because they're visually illiterate. They don't know how to read the painting. They can appreciate the painting. It's art appreciation. Screw art appreciation. Let's get some art literacy classes going. Hmm? So we can actually read the essay. We can, and when, when, when you read it, you actually are transported into the studio and you're actually engaging in the internal dialogue that the artist was going through. Now, a lot of times, uh, many, many artists nowadays, they don't go through the conscious dialogue that we train you to do at the academy. It's much more subconscious because either through hard work or influence or whatever, it's in there and you're kind of like feeling things out. So it's much more organic and much more arbitrary. So what we focus on at the academy is becoming, is taking that, that innate power and making it super fucking powerful because we make it intentional. Okay. So let's go and look at an artist who is super intentional about this stuff. Alexi's dad. Look at this painting. Oh my god. It's so freaking cool. I'm going to let you just look at it for a moment. Let, let it let it come in. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and delete that blue background because I think it's causing um there. It gives us a little more contrast in there. You can feel, you can feel right off the bat that this is composed. It feels like it was a puzzle that has been put together perfectly. That there's no pieces of the puzzle that are in the right space, but up and over and out of, you know, not locked into the puzzle design. Every single space in this place in, in, in this painting is locked into where it needs to be. You can feel that. That's what happened when you look at master works, you know, people who are trained in the, in the early parts of the century um, and, and obviously beyond, uh, beyond. But um, when you look at their work, it feels together. It doesn't feel, uh, it, it feels sound. There's an integrity to it. And, and we think, well, maybe it's the colors he's using. No, it's not the colors. It's, in this case, it's the placement. It's, it's the use of space. It's, it's the grid work that goes into it. So this is called the land. And if you just look at it and you don't know how to ask the right questions, you will not get the right answers. And so... You know, I could tell right away that there were about three or four things that, um, uh, in terms of design, that were popping out 
you, you can feel the curve of that mountain, I mean, of that ground in the back. I mean, that's a globe, you know? That's, that's the whole world here. You can feel that it, there's something here that kind of cuts, cuts off and it's like a, an enclosure, a circle. So let's go ahead. I, I have eight slides I'm going to go through with this one. It's a long one. And let me tell you, I'm just scratching the surface on it. This is a very, very profound piece of work, very intelligent. Uh, it, it, in my opinion, it's probably one of my favorite paintings I've ever, ever analyzed. And maybe specifically because I am a dad, because I am, uh, you know, uh, with, with the Academy, uh, I'm serious about composition. Uh, there's just a lot of things that this painting resonates with me. Uh, one, one of the things I've, I've always said since I was about 14 is, you know, um, parenting is farming, you know, and we have to be like farmers. We have to be like farmers, and part of that is coming in touch with nature, the ground, but there's also like a work ethic that comes with it. There's also a certain type of thinking that comes with it. You know, people say, well, what are you going to do when you retire? I don't, uh, retire? What, what are you talking about? There's no retirement in my vocabulary. You think these people retired? No. You know what they did? They went out and they worked their farms, and they raised up the next generation to take on their business. That's what they did. And if they were lucky, they might have relaxed five months before they pass away. If, if. How many of these people died in the fields because they worked to the last day? Freaking retirement. Um, let's go here. You can feel right off the bat that there is a radiance something's radiating you see that i'm going to click this on and off a few times look at the pacing there is uh from the little kids here uh this i'm going to call him the artist because it looks like he's drawing um i'm not really sure what this guy is there's some things in here because i don't understand the 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 tools that they're using or whatever uh, I, I'm a little lost, but I'm not lost on the design. I'm not lost on the story, just some of the details, okay? Um, but obviously, this guy holding this uh, big tool is very significant. Uh, the artist is significant. I don't know if that's uh, uh, Leonid um, himself or if it's, if it's to represent a, an archetype in the community, okay? So... As this is coming through, here's this fella sitting down here. You can begin to see, you know, in the spaces of these of these um, enclosures inside of these circles, you can see rows of people, and they're just rows and rows and rows and rows of people, and they're rippling out from the center. Now, ultimately, the center comes ultimately down to where the guy puts his hand on the earth, on the land, okay? But I love how that comes, how his hand and his arm comes back up to his head, and you'll actually find out that that's actually the center of the painting. But, um, <clears throat> but I just want you to feel and start looking at the nuances in all of these people, okay? This is design. I'm going to bring it back to the original. So you can't see that painting ever, the, the, you can't see it again without being sensitive to all those curves now. Now it is a bunch of people in this painting on a farm, but they're also, but now you're also feeling this movement, this pulsating rhythm through it. On a side note, I really love the fact that there's like this little house in the back, all the way in the back on the top left hand corner. You see the little cow, and it goes up along the edge, and then there's like this little house. The fact that that detail exists, and the fact that it's a detail that we can't really, really make out, but we know what it is because of the simple shapes that it, it, it is, it's a, and, and the value, I mean, that's an important detail. And out of all of this information, we see it because it's an important detail. Is this, are all these people family? Do they all come from one home, one house? Not that they actually live in one house, 
but is that's what is that what being communicated here? Is this more like a family portrait? Hmm. Because you go through the land, through the people, and you ultimately come back up to this house. You see this pole here that the guy's holding? If you follow that up, it leads us back up towards the house. So the next thing I looked for was high point of contrasts. I wanted to find the value relationships and what the story was telling us through the value. Notice in the front, on the left-hand side here, uh, the guy sitting on the left-hand side uh, is in a white shirt. I'm going to say white. It's not a white, but let's say a light shirt, okay? A light shirt. The man is in the light shirt. The man standing is in a light shirt. The artist with the pad is in a light shirt. Coming back down, there's a guy with a grayish light shirt, and then the farmer uh, or the fellow with his hand on the ground. I don't know if he's the farmer. I don't know if he's a priest. I don't know something, but he's connected he is connected to the earth, okay? And he's also the representation of all of the people. When he touches the earth, the whole community touches the earth, okay? Um, notice that these one, two, three, four, five guys are all in light shirts. Now, what's behind them are all dark values. So they're light figures against a dark value. Uh, look at all their pants. Their pants are about a mid-tone, Right? So it's a, it's a, a mid-value, light-value, dark-value. And notice that the dark value behind them creates like a curve that comes around. And then all of a sudden it comes to this figure, the old lady, um, who's almost in the center, off-center, with the two children. Notice that her gown, her, her, her scarf, are very, very dark, but she's surrounded by this light around her head, this light-value around her head, her arms. She pops. She pops. Now, if we come across to the right-hand side, we'll see another woman here. Uh, she's actually uh, another woman here. She also is surrounded by dark uh, values, and she's a light figure on a dark background. So she's important, too. She's important, too. But she's not nearly as important as the older uh, old lady, okay? Notice also... That on the, on the edge of the old lady, okay, I'm going to go back here. Everything to the left is built on this curve, okay? You can feel that everything from the left of her is, is in this curve, curve uh, this enclosure, this curve. Everything to the right is built on this strong diagonal. Look at all of the... Um, from the arm uh, to the lady's scarf, uh, the, the construction of the woman as she's sitting on this, uh, whatever, this big wagon. The man here is constructed. All the people in the back, background, they're all constructed on this diagonal. Now I'm going to go back to the original, and now you can see it. Everybody to the right is leaning. It has a, a thrust to it that, that's leaning uh, away. And when you look at everybody to the other side, uh, of, to the left of that, that line, there's this connectiveness, this, this inclusion to them. Oops. Also notice, this is very, very important. Very, very important that the division, the line that divides the two sides, there is a boy who is crossing from one side to the other. And the grandmother or the old woman has her hand on the back of his head. This is absolutely important to understand in this piece. This is where the magic of this piece occurs. There are only two people, well, maybe we could say three people, three people who are actually have their hands open and coupling something. The man has his hand extended touching the earth. The older woman has her hand extended cupping the back of the little boy's hand. 
I mean, uh, head. And the woman, the young woman over to the right is cupping her breast as she feeds her baby. This, and if you look at that, you can see a beautiful arc that goes from the hand of the man to the hand of the grandmother to the hand of the woman. Do you see that? This is profound. I'm going to get into the meanings of these things. See, the time that I've already spent on this one painting, most people would go to a museum and see an entire freaking show. Because they can't read a painting. And I'm only halfway through, and the reality is I only scratched the surface on this painting. This is freaking brilliant. Let's go to the next slide here. Now, what I want to... I'll get back to the, uh, to the hands and all that stuff in a minute when I, when I close this out. Let's take a look at some composition in terms of layout, okay? We have our mother rectangle, which is our main rectangle. And in that, we have two lines. We have a Baroque and we have a sinister. I'm not going to get into the, the, the significance and the meanings of those in this video. But just understand that in every rectangle, you have a dominant uh, Baroque and dominant and sinister, which is basically your two dominant angles or, or diagonals that go from the top left to the bottom right, the bottom left to the top right. It creates a cross or an X, okay, inside of the box. Now, in this case, we have some very significant uh, things that are, in a, uh, that are aligned on those lines. Uh, we, obviously, where they all converge, when two lines converge, we call it an eye. And where the eye is, in this case, is right, dead, right in the center. And that is the mind of the man. That is the man. He is the center focal point of this entire community or family or town, or whatever, you know, that is. I don't know necessarily the form and the, and the, and the, the story, uh, you know, behind it, but in terms of its design, whoever these people are, he is the spearhead of it, okay? He is where it begins. He's crucial to this, to this community. Now, if we go up towards, from him, we go up towards the top right, we can see that that line goes through the boy's head and the woman's hand. Hmm? That's a beautiful uh, uh, placement. We go up, we go to the top of the woman. Look at that. The top of, uh, of where she is. She's strategically placed there because she's important. See, it's just not about drawing a figure in there. It's about putting the figure so we can have context, but then managing the nuances of that figure so that every aspect, every line, every space, every curve, every value, every temperature in this painting works together to support the story, to communicate the concept. Because if you're not communicating, then all you're doing is moving paint on the canvas, which is pretty, but it ain't profound. And it can be really, really pretty, but it ain't profound. It's in the story and the effectiveness of communicating the story. And the story doesn't necessarily have to be a narrative. It can be a feeling, like example, uh, in the last painting with the horse. That was a sensation. We were feeling the movement of that horse and the jockey through space, through time. We were experiencing the ride. Okay? So it doesn't have to be a story like Jack and Jill went up the hill. So from the man, if we go up to the top left-hand corner, we can see that it goes through the neck of this fella. So his head is plopped right there on the center. We go up through the guy who's on the vertical. He's, he's right through there. I like how it, it constructs part of the bottom of the uh, drawing pad of the artist fella. And then we come up through, and then we see two ladies. And it's interesting that one lady is below the line, the other lady is above the line. And so I'm not really sure the significance of that, but I'm sure there was a reason for it. <clears throat> you 
You know, I just thought of something, and I don't know if this is true or not, but it is very, very interesting. If we look at all three of these, all four of these quadrants, we have a top, we have a bottom, we have a left, and we have a right. <clears throat> there was a question that I was asking myself through, throughout the day when looking at this piece, and I think I might have just followed, uh, found the answer to this thing. If this is a family, if this is a family, I'm wondering if the triangle is all on the left-hand side is the man's family. Maybe these are his brothers or his brother and his dad and, and his family tree. And the people on above him, let's say, I don't know if that's his mother or, I mean, not his mother, maybe his wife. I don't know who the lady in the black uh, is. The, the older lady, but maybe that's her family. And then the people to the right might be their kid and, and the descendants. You see what I'm saying? So if it isn't, that's absolutely fine. I do find it interesting that the guy sitting, uh, in the, in, in, you know, sitting down, he has that cool straw hat. And I know, Lexi, I've seen a bunch of photos with you and videos uh, that you like to wear that straw hat. So I'm wondering if that's part of the culture or part of your family or something. I, I, I'd be interested in hearing hearing the backstory on your hat. Um, <clears throat> but if you were going to do a, 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 uh, um, an image of a family tree, or you're speaking about families coming together, this would be a very interesting and brilliant strategy to use. Now, notice in the bottom, you have just a couple people's feet, but basically there are no, there's no people in um, the uh, bottom triangle. Hmm? Hmm? It's almost like his arm becomes the, 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 the trunk of a tree, of a family tree that, that comes out of the earth. So again, you can keep going with it. I'm going to stop going with that train of thought and keep moving and looking at the design. Um, but the reason why I'm going in that train of thought is because if you wanted to, to do something along these lines, you could. Now, I, I just noticed something. Let me find a, uh, a painting here. Um, let me look it up here. Um, Blake painting. Here he is. When, I, when I'm looking at this painting, um, let me see if I can do this here. Do, 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 do. Okay, I want to add um, a window capture. <clears throat> and let's say here, um, Huh. Okay, so that's not going to work for me here. Uh, oh, wait. Um, let me try something here. Hold on. This is pretty interesting. Um, display capture. Let's try that. Okay. We're going to say, no, we're going to say window. No, and then we're going to go to... Hmm. All right, we'll do this. We'll go in here, and I'll just uh, import it. Okay, so let's see if we can. Ah, forget it. Okay, <clears throat> let me, uh, I, I know how I can do this. Let me download this image here. I'll save it, and then I'll bring it in. Come on, you can do it. Uh, 15, all right, now, now we got it, cool. All right, let me import it here. Uh, Blake, browse. There we are. 
All right. So you probably can see this. So let me. When I when I'm looking at this painting, I'm wondering if Leonid was inspired by William Blake's painting um, here. Wondering. Okay. Let's see here. Ah. Well. That painting there, I, I don't know why I can't get it to work, but um, the William uh, Blake painting where, I don't know if it's God or some guy sitting, you know, coming down from the heavens and he, and he shoots down that uh, uh, big image, a uh, big image. Um, is, is, uh, now, I think I, I really want to see this here. Okay, so let me do this. Let me do this. Okay. Um, bring it in here uh, Dropbox screenshot come on seven forty six okay here we are cool let's see if it works here all right cool yes I don't understand. All right, so here we are. Shit. I just did something I haven't done before, and now I messed everything up. Crap. All right, okay. Forget it, forget it. I don't want to break the flow here. Okay, so let's go to the next slide here. Um, <clears throat> now, there are a couple things that are going on in this image, uh, in this slide here. If we take our main rectangle that has the X on it, okay, uh, and we take that rectangle and we flip it, in this case it's a landscape orientation, and we flip it 90 degrees to a portrait orientation, then what will happen is we will take it from there and we'll shrink it down so that the new height is exactly the same height as the original rectangle, the mother rectangle or the main rectangle, okay? That way they have something in common and they also, what they have in common is that they're really the same rectangle and the same angles except that one is uh, portrait orientation, the other one is landscape orientation. And then what we do is we butt them up against the corner and we call these a reciprocal. And what happens is that the mind, when it looks at a work of art, it already does all of these calculations very, very quickly. And so it's looking for information to be placed in these certain areas within inside of a, a given area. And so um, when you can break up a painting at this level and you see that very, very significant pieces of information are plotted uh, on them, then you know that the artist is, is, is composing at a very high uh, degree of intentionality. Okay? Now, also one thing you want to do is look at these angles and start looking around the areas of the angles to see the repetition of angles. Okay? So, let's start over at the left-hand corner. We have our new reciprocal, or what we call a daughter rectangle. Okay, we have the X inside of it. We can see that the X gives us a nice thrust up at the guy's back. Um, it shows us, um, it comes up through, puts the, ladies on, the lady on one side, and there's a figure that it goes through uh, in the back. It comes down, so on the right side of that uh, comes through the, the man's... Um, side of the uh, older man's head, down through his, uh, arm, uh, his, um, his body, down through his leg, his foot, 
Also notice the guy sitting, his foot comes right up to that edge too. It doesn't extend past it, it's, it's right there. You can even see his other foot is kind of brought into that, uh, into that diagonal. We come up along that diagonal up towards the top left hand side of the image and we see there are dark values on one side of the triangle and then on the other side um, there are all the people's faces. You see how they're like locked in that triangle area, all the people? Above them you see the cow in the background and that stuff. What's also neat is if you look at the, that angle that goes from the top left to the bottom right of that reciprocal rectangle, it is exactly, and let me say it again, it is exactly the same diagonal that is found in the tool that this man is holding that's being pushed into the earth. Do you think that was accidental? Let me, let me, uh, let me tell you. It's not, <laughs> okay? It's absolutely intentional. Now, if you come over to the, 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 the old lady with the, uh, with the little boy in her hand there, pointing up towards her hand, right underneath her hand, you'll actually see a stick of some sort um, that comes down through the guy's knee, uh, and it has this thrust, exactly the same angle. This isn't accidental. This, isn't, this cannot be done intuitively. Okay, this is a conscious decision. He has a billion infinite uh, angles he can pick from, and he picked the same exact angle. Hmm? Now, I could break this up and go really, really deep, but I'm not going to do that, but I could. And I could plot out probably almost 80 to 90% of the lines in this image and how they lock into this grid. But that would be overkill. It is Friday night. And I want you guys to have some energy later for, for happy time. Now, one thing I want to point out, uh, let's go over to the right-hand side. You can see the X inside of the rectangle. It does have this, uh, you can see the woman with the baby and the other woman. They both line up inside that top triangle, okay? Excuse me. If you come down at the bottom, uh, let's let, well. First of all, let's go to the the vertical. That's the inside vertical. You can see that the guy with the red hair uh, is leaning up on that vertical. Hmm? And we come down and we see that the wagon wheel is on that vertical. Hmm? And we come down. And what's interesting is as we come down, right where the uh, wagon wheel ends, basically you'll see that there's a very thin line that I have that connects you from all the way from the top right to the bottom left, okay, it goes through her feet, and where it meets that vertical of the reciprocal, if you would draw a line, a horizontal line straight across, you would see that the dog is landed right on that line. There's a dog down there. Let me, uh, let me show you. See the dog? He is plotted right on that line. I mean, you see the level of calculation that has to go into this? The care and the craft? This is why it pisses me off that they don't teach composition in art schools anymore. Hmm? They don't teach it. Now, the Russians, from my understanding, and somebody, uh, you know, please tell me if I'm wrong, but I don't think I am. Because the Russians were closed off from uh, the world for so many years, they they didn't get their art wasn't polluted by the bullshit that 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 is in the art industry now, and so they've been able to hold on to classic training. The importance of design and composition isn't a class that they take that they took in their freshman year. And it was, it, was, it was disguised as a 2D design class. It was something, it was part of their, their training. And where most of the world threw the baby out with the bathwater, the Russians were closed off. I'm excited. 
to, 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 to spend some time. I can't believe I'm saying this because I've never, ever, ever once in my life ever thought I would ever want to go to Russia. But when I see the art that comes out of that region of the earth, Bulgaria, Russia, I'd be fascinated to go see places like Romania. Because the people there have a work ethic. They're willing to put the time into the craft of their paintings. They're not just trying to bang it out to pay the light bill. There is history to it. There's care and craft to it. Plus, like, there's passion to it. And, and maybe not like a, 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 a fiery passion that's like all over the place energy, but something that is grounded, it's earthy. You know, my, one of my friends from Bulgaria, uh, Kuril Jeloskov, he said something, we went out for pizza, uh, man, I can't believe it's almost 20 years ago. And he said something that just, I was like, what the hell are you talking about? Right? And we were talking about women, because that's what young men do. And uh, he says, um, he says, brother, I want in my woman, he says, I want a woman with hands like she's like she digs the earth. And I'm like, who the hell says something like that? You want a woman with hands who th that seem like she digs the earth? I I, I couldn't comprehend it. You know, I'm, I don't I don't I don't know what he's talking about. And the reason why I'm bringing it up is because, you know, it's almost twenty years later, and I'm starting to f I'm like, oh, that's what he's talking about, like. Somebody who's, who's doing something, you know, that that energy comes through their hands, you know, and they're actually engaged in daily hard work, you know, um, and, and obviously that changes the body. So now he came from that place. He came from that type of world. And, and it was just, and he saw that there was beauty in that for us Americans who enjoy our comfort in our lotions and our palm olive uh, dish soap, you know, so that we don't get uh, tough hands. Um, that was a very foreign concept to me. And, uh, and now when I look at this painting, I, I can feel, you know, those stories of Kirill are, are coming back to me now. Um, so we're, we're looking at the, the, this community of people, you know, their hand is in the earth. Um, they take time to cultivate the ground. They take time to cultivate uh, their artwork. They take time to cultivate their family. See, this really isn't about farms and the and the earth. This is actually much more about what well, about all of it, you know. But at one level, it's about the land is is the ground and the earth and you and you farm it and it re, it produces for you it gives you sustenance you care for it and it cares for you but this painting is about relationship relationship with the earth and the earth's relationship with us it's about uh, a relationship between human uh, between other people a community see this is in this painting, one, one thing I, I, I just find remarkable is if you look at this boy right by the, the old lady, he has red hair. And let me come back. And then, and then, and then the, little, the other little boy has red hair. And the man has red hair. And then this baby over here, I don't think it has red hair, but it ultimately needs our eye back to this little baby. Okay, let me go up to the original image here. I want to, I want to point out a couple things that <clears throat> I, I, I'm noticing. The little, the, 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 the teenager-ish kid, okay, maybe he's 12, 10, 14, I don't know, somewhere in there. Um, he has red hair and he has a light, 
uh, like a, a mid value um, color shirt on. Okay. Notice it's also plain. It doesn't have any like decoration on it. Uh, the people uh, to the left of him, you know, you can see the guys in the back. They kind of almost have like military outfits on. I don't know if they are military outfits, but they kind of have that look to them. Uh, the other guys, they have like ornaments on their shirts. There's a, a texture. Uh, the women have like this interesting uh, floral pattern on their sleeves. Okay. But these kids don't have any of that. I don't know <clears throat> if this is a story of immigration, meaning that there might be a, a family of a different community that's coming in and, and they need help. And so this community being more maybe affluent is bringing them into their, into their fold. And the reason why I'm suggesting something like that is because we look at the redheaded boy. There are no other redheads in this picture, except for the boy, the little boy, and then the man. Also, and then you have the little baby. Also, there is nothing, no one else in this picture that has something on or in their mouth. Except for the little boy, he has his hands up near his mouth. The redheaded man has his hand up near his mouth. And that then leads us over into the baby, which has something, has a booby in his mouth or her mouth. And so there's this rhythm. You can see this rhythm. Boom, boom, boom. Look at the guy with the blue shirt behind the redheaded man. I love the blue in juxtaposition to the red hair. It activates each other. But look at the curve of his shoulder. That's a beautiful curve, isn't it? It comes up through one shoulder, up through his mustache and his beard and comes down through. That's a piece of geometry. And that, what that does is it moves our eye, it thrusts our eye over into the boob. Okay? So consciously we see a dude in the background and we see a woman and a baby and a guy. But subconsciously, we, our eye is just moving through a thrust. It's moving through the figure to where we want it to be. And this is what Degas said. We don't draw what we see. Art is not about what you see. It's about what you make others see. And see, it, because he's a composer, he's composed an image that allows us to move through and get all of this information, especially if you know how to read it, that he's allowing us to see the baby. Look how tiny the baby is. In all of this information, we see the baby drinking. In all of this information, we see the house in the, all the way in the background. And trust me, I don't have like superhuman eyeballs. I don't like carrots. <laughs> this is gorgeous. Gorgeous piece. Oh, man, I'm so excited. It was such a treat to look at this thing. Okay, so let's go further because it still gets better. That's what I said. It gets better. This is a good one. Hmm. So now we're going to bring in another la layer of, uh, of armature. This is what we call this, is an armature. So we have our big mother rectangle. And we have our reciprocals, which we've then uh, reduced and made them very thin lines. Okay, so the thick white lines are what we call our rebated squares. They are squares that come in from each side. They give us uh, a another... Um, <clears throat> excuse me another vertical we have an in, two more interior verticals and if you can see that the man's hand comes into one of those verticals and then his other hand comes into the other and then the boy is is placed on that vertical interestingly enough i don't know who the soldier looking man in the background is but guess what he's he's significant character in this story because of his placement he's drop dead center now he's low value contrast so he's not he's not as important but he is significant so if we start over at the left hand corner we can go ahead and and come down that that x and we can see major major points in this image that are in alignment we come up from the bottom left hand corner up to the top right hand corner of that square and we can see it forms the the, the edge of that tool that one of the one of the legs of that tool 
and if we keep going up, it forms the edge of the drawing paper that the artist is drawing on. Or he might be a writer. I think he's probably a, someone sketching. But maybe he's writing. We come up to that point, we, we, you know, and then we come down that vertical. In that vertical, we see the, red, the guy with the red shirt, and he has a jacket on. Right there, bam! There's a, that's, the difference between the shirt and the jacket is placed directly on that line. That's intentional. That's not arbitrary. That's not accidental. That's not, oh, I just kind of felt it. No, that's intentional. I mean, the, the layers of intelligence that is required to compose a symphony of this magnitude is amazing. I would have loved to be able to sit with this man and just hear his stories and hear his thinking. Because not only is his craft amazing, but the story in which he's telling is, is profound. We come over. Oh, this is amazing. Oh, I love this. <laughs> I got so excited when I saw this. Whew. Get yourself ready. I'm going to take you on a ride through this painting. That's right. I just sang you a song. I'm serenading you because this is how brilliant this thing is. All right. So let's go over to the right-hand side. Again, the boy... Uh, it comes down into that vertical. The hand comes down into that vertical. We, we ride up through that diagonal uh, uh, on that 45 degree angle. We come up through, bam, titty, bam, baby, baby boob in the mouth. Okay, very important. Spot on, crunk. Okay, if you see where that um, vertical, I mean, not the vertical, sorry, that uh, the, the, the diagonal that we're riding up, where it converges and it makes an eye with the other with the reciprocal diagonal and you draw a horizontal line coming straight across bam it goes straight through the baby's face right where the mouth is sucking on the nipple do you think that is not intentional if you do then i know a really good psychologist for you and they will prescribe you the right medication but this is intentional this is this is amazing. Okay. So there's a lady in the background. She's popped on that line. I don't know who she is, but she's of significance because she didn't accidentally just show up there. Okay. Now, notice how the reciprocal comes through the center and the both the 45-degree uh, angles come to a center point. Okay. This is kind of cool. Boom. In his hip. And what's funny is there's a wagon wheel. But let me show you the real wheel. The real wheel. <laughs> That's kind of funny. When we have a point in that center, now notice that there's a point up here that I put, a white point. And the reason why is because I wanted to show you that this circle isn't arbitrary either. That it's a compass swing, it's a compass circle, a circle made with a compass that goes from the distance, one point where, where the hip is, to where those two major diagonals converge in that eye. And if you swing that compass around, if you start there, through her face, right in the boob, in the mouth of the baby. Wow, that sounds very like old school Bill Cosby. In the baby. So it goes straight through there, it comes out, and you can see the little hand, the fingers on there, following that same curve, coming up through, coming down, I mean coming down, uh, coming down through the woman in red, it goes right into the dog, it creates the, 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 the edge of the dog, it comes up through, look at it, it comes through that point again, comes over, up through the man's feet, Look at it. It forms the back of the boy's uh, leg. It comes up. It forms the uh, the fabric that that he's cloaked in. Okay, his his little skirt dress shirt thing. Up through him. Up through his head. Up through the old lady's hand. Back up through the man. Do you see how like brilliant that whole little story is? I find it interesting that the dog. It's kind of red-headed too. It's brown. Leans orange. This is amazing. Look at the guy in the red hair. 
to the right of him is this beautiful blue, right? But to the left of him is a guy in a purple. Interesting. Now, next to the purple, you have two oranges. You have a, 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 a very saturated orange. You have a muted toned down orange. And then you have a dark brown. And then the guy's hat is uh, a, a, a beautiful yellowy orange. And then behind him, he has a beautiful blue and a beautiful green. But notice how the light orange and the dark orange or the muted orange are divided along that diagonal, uh, along that diagonal thrust uh, of, of that square. Again, even the color placement. Oh, you don't believe me? Let's go up to the other one. Um, to the top right-hand corner. Go to the top right-hand corner. You see the orange in the background? Bam! Orange. Green. They're like, they're just shapes. These are puzzle pieces that were all designed intentionally. Hmm. <sighs> I could go on for another four hours analyzing uh, this piece. That's why it kind of boggles my mind that people want to sit down and create a painting in four hours and call it done. It's like, what? What are you talking about? Now, before I show you this, this is, the, this is, this is, and let's just get into it. The entire time that I was looking at this painting, I I could not figure out <clears throat> the significance of this big tool that the guy on the left is holding. Now he is standing in attention. He is standing in vertical, 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 vertical thrusts. He is the man of authority in this community. Okay? I do not know if he is the father of the guy who is touching the ground. That's very possible. I don't know I, I don't know who he is, but I know he is a man of authority, respect, dignity in this image and in this community. Look at his shirt, the fine details that he has. It's clean. He stands at attention. I don't know if that's his daughter or a wife or whoever's standing next to, her, next to him, but look at the way she's dressed with all those beautiful colors. The scarf, it's, 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 it has, it's, you know, it's designed. Most of all the other women's scarves are just plain colors. But hers is sassy, right? So this guy is very important, and I, and I could not figure out why he was holding this tool, I couldn't figure out what the tool was. I thought it was one of those, uh, you know, like the things that the Grim Reaper carries, you know. So if that's the case, if it is a type of sickle, a sickle is used for harvesting. Hmm? There is a plow here, and a plow is used to cut the ground to put the seed in. But the sickle is used for harvesting. I do not know if it is a sickle. It would actually make it would it would be important to know that with this piece because the question is are they planting seeds or are they harvesting? It looks like uh I can't tell if the ground is just being dug up or if that's actually vegetation that's being pulled, you know, that they're actually getting ready for a harvest, but it looks it looks like um that this community came and they're digging up the earth. Okay, that's that's what it looks like to me. Okay, that they're digging up the earth. That's why the uh, the plow is there. So I couldn't figure out what this um, tool is. Now I'm starting to think that maybe it is a tool that al that measures the distance between one row to another row, where you then plow, and then you put your seeds in, so that you know, so that uh, when you grow your crops, they don't they don't um, uh, grow over top of each other and kill the plants, okay? I don't know, but that's what I'm just thinking. But this is one reason why I'm thinking it. As I was looking at this painting, I'm like, I know it's significant because of the value, 
uh, r relationship to the whole. It is a light, f uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a light tool on a darker background. So it brings, if you squint your eye, that, that shape really jumps out. It also, we showed earlier that it was composed based on the armature of the grid. So it locks into the grid absolutely perfect. It, we also showed that it repeats <coughs> throughout the piece. That the angles that it, that it makes up repeats. But now look at this. What I did was I drew, the, I drew it and I copied and pasted it. I did not scale it, I just copied and pasted it, and w watch what happens. Get ready to see something really profound and very magical. If you take that same shape, exactly the same shape, and by exact I mean the same measurements, the same diagonals, where one line meets another line, it creates an eye, that is that convergence points and you copy it and you bring it over to the other side and you place it on the arm of the old lady voila suhamim walatim there it is there it is the distance of those two boys the hands of the old woman are where the where the points of this tool she is the tool now, if we copy it and paste it again, this is the motif, this is the rhythm, this is the pulse. And we bring it to the man who looks, you know, kind of bummy-ish. And we bring it up on that diagonal. You can see the guy in the blue behind him. He falls right in there. Bam, bam. The woman with the baby, wham. Right where her boob meets the baby. Same exact measurement, same exact angle, same exact distance. So when I look at all three of these, is this about the cultivation of the earth and the cultivation of your family, the cultivation of your lineage? Is this about the planning that goes into cultivating the earth and the planning that goes into cultivating your children and the planning that goes into cultivating your, the next kin, the next generation? Is the one on the far left uh, 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 talking about placing seed and, and passing on your DNA? Because it's talking about the baby. And then the grandmother with the two youngins. And notice how right the, the guy whose hand's on the ground, his back comes right, you know, he's with inside that triangle. Hmm? Is, is that... Is that motif, is that section talking about the passing on of knowledge? So the first one is passing on your DNA. The second is passing on your knowledge, your, 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 the wisdom, the, the, the culture of your family, your traditions, your heritage. And then the original one with the guy with the tool, passing on... The wealth, the tools, the economy, the authority, the governance, being able to measure the earth. I mean, this is mind-blowing piece of work. This you can put on your wall, and if when you know how to read it, man, you want to compose a dynasty? See, what I love about this story is that the guy who painted this painting raised an amazing artist. And that artist is, a, is raising, he has, from my understanding, two sons that he's raising in the arts. It's the same, it's the same concept. It's passing on that, that seed, either in, through your DNA, through your knowledge, through your wealth. Absolutely love this painting. Mine, it, it just, it resonates with who I am and it resonates with the academy at a deep, deep level. This is the kind of work, this is the quality and the level of work that we promote. 
I thank you for sharing your dad's artwork with me, Alexi. It was an absolute privilege and a pleasure. It made my, my Friday night very, very, very amazing. So I wanna thank everybody for showing up. Please, please share this video with people that you care about, who are into art, uh, who want to know how to read and learn about appreciating art at a much, much deeper level, about reading art, and those who want to author art, who want to compose art at a very profound level. Share this video with those people. Share it in the, your, your art groups, in your, in your Facebook fan pages. We are calling the Core 80. By the end of this year, December 31st, I want to see a minimum, a minimum of 80 artists who are out there who are craving and hungry for something deeper who are just tired of painting and copying, but who are longing to compose and tell stories. I cannot teach you how to paint. I suck at it. But you want to know how to tell a story visually and compose that so it actually impacts another human being? I may be the only person on the face of the earth who can take you through that journey. I've been walking around trying to see people who can do it. And people, a lot of people have, have good uh, aspects of it, but they haven't brought it together. And if they know it, they don't know how to teach it. I can teach it. So if you've been craving information, I don't care if you're a professional or an emerging artist. I'm... I, I, I love the work that I see out there, but when I read it from the perspective of composition, I'm let down most of the time. So if you want to learn how to compose profound art, I ain't promising you that, I, I, you know, if you come to the academy, you're going to sell more artwork or you're going to win awards. Not saying that won't happen, but that's not my promise to you. But I do promise you're going to compose artwork and tell stories that when you die, you're going to be proud that you did. That people are going to uh, look at it and cherish it for generations because it was composed to, to, for the marathon. They God said there are better painters than I, but because I remember I'm a draftsman first, I will be the one that they remember. I will be the one that they remember. So if you want to be remembered, if you want something to be able to pass on uh, deep, deep, deep meaning and communicate your thoughts at, 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 at a very deeper, at a, at a deeper and much more profound level, then you belong here. This is what we're about. And also, if you have a heart for other people, if, you, if your mind is set up to not be a selfish, selfish son of a bitch and think that, you know, the world starts and ends with you, if you're not like that, and you actually have a legacy thinking mentality, that you want to leave something for the people of, of your time and the time that comes after us, either through your art or through your genes or through your family, through your name, through your wealth, and this is where you belong. We ain't painting pretty pictures. We're not just living pretty lives. We're old school, old soul. We're farmers. That's what I've always called ourselves since we were 14 years old. I visualized all this. We're farmers. We dig the earth. Our fields are made in grids. Our crop, our images. Share this video. 
Facebook message me if you want to learn more.